Well, you got to listen to your body for sure. I mean, but in the early stages, I think, well, and age has a big part. Everybody's different. Uh, but just listen to your body. I mean, if you feel like your practices are getting, I mean, using other people that you're the same training partners as a gauge, if you feel like you're going the wrong direction, then you, you take more time. I mean, if you feel like you're progressing against your, your, your training partners, then continue to do it. I mean, my brother, even at the at later years in his arm wrestling career, um, he was getting to the point where he was going to different practices and arm wrestling almost every single day at in his mid 30s and it was you know initially it was hurting him and killing him but he got over that hump and it's he started progressing even that much more so I mean don't be afraid to experiment I mean you know if it was always if it was a big tournament I would always give myself two weeks rest I mean it was always better to be well rested and to have the tendons be really completely healed and strong than it was the little bit extra that I would have possibly gained by trying to squeeze in one extra workout so I mean if it's it's if it's an important tournament for you lean on the side of being well rested I mean if it's if it's something that's small and it's a local event and you're just using it as a training aid then then it's not so important right I mean you can work up right up to it yeah I, I had I had some nervous energy where I would do little things just to kind of get my brain right that I mean, I'm still good I'm still good I'm healing but uh, so you don't do like activation like like isometric kind no. of yourself up before the no I, I say that I don't but in the past I can do I can remember that arm wrestling was always on my mind so I was always going through scenarios and, and understanding what I possibly would be up against but on the day of the tournament you're, you're no scared. you try to be as calm as possible you let that just let, let that build and, and stew yeah calm today when you were going against Corey I wrestled the other night and I didn't warm up and I just and I tweaked my hand like that. Cold start. We went 100%. I was a little worried about that with him. I was like, well, are, you, are we going to warm up a little bit? <laughs> there was no warming up. Did no. He do that? But, he was, but he was slow. I mean, he, we were just kind of turned into it slow, and so it was, it was comfortable for me. In general, you don't do that. I don't. Well, in a, in a, turn, in a tournament, I don't like to get any lactic acid, any, any blood flow, unnecessary blood flow. I'm my crispest. Hardest hitting uh, coal puller. Got to be a coal puller. I, I don't. I don't buy. It. Maybe it's just because I'm so horribly out of shape that any any little bit of blood flow is making making me, you know, bringing me down a level or two. But um, I'd, I'd rather I'd rather go up there fresh. Cause yeah, I, you know, and I've tried to experiment with try to get the adrenaline going, try to get that adrenaline rush, try, you know, yeah, yeah, get psyched up, like get angry, and uh, it's always been a negative for me. I, I've always done better being calm and trying to really understand the situation and be just super alert. Most people will tell you just high repetition. Um, I, 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 I do the lazy rod and just sometimes just rest and just do nothing. I've, I've had situations where I spend months and just icing and heat and ice, heat and ice and not aggravating at all. So it's, it's hard for me to remember back 30 years ago when I first started, but I, there, there was times, I mean, I, you know, you can't hardly get a comb through your hair. <laughs> elbow pain is, is... I've actually transferred my elbow pain to my shoulder now because my elbows are starting to get strong now to my shoulders. Right. So it's nothing, nothing but time. I mean, it's hard for me to remember that far back, but it's 35 years ago. And uh, I actually ended up breaking my elbow at 13 years old. So I know what kind of stress arm wrestling puts on the elbow. All all that for all that forearm is basically anchored there at that point and uh, at a young age my forearm muscles basically tore that bone off the end of my arm so uh, yeah it's just something that you just have to just deal with everybody I think everybody's case is a little different I mean obviously ice and heat and rest and um, there, but there's gonna come a point where you're gonna just say screw it I'm gonna try to push through it nothing nothing worse than that toothache that throbbing whoop, whoop, whoop. Is that mainly from just the side pressure or? Yeah, yeah side mainly. pressure. Yeah, that's, that's one of the key, key muscles for great arm wrestlers is that upper, upper tricep. I'm not sure exactly what the, the, the muscle is there that's in the upper part of the arm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not even sure if, that, if it's tricep, so it's that muscle that's right where there. That's the, the, the side that, pressure comes from? That's side pressure. 
Well, I tore my shoulder. The, the, the first real major tear was th not arm wrestling. It was throwing a softball. And I was 21, 22. It was right after Over the Top, maybe a year later after Over the Top. And that's where I, I actually heard it go. <laughs> so it tore my labrum out. But I lived with it for 20 years. I was able to, to, to heal up and have that scar tissue get in there. And um, within another year or so, I was back to arm wrestling, you know, fairly strong again. But... Um, as I got to my 40s, it was just, it was hurting and too much scar tissue, I think. But I, I should have probably had it fixed in retrospect, because um, shoulder doctors told me, oh, it didn't do anything for you, did it? And I'm like, no, no, it didn't. <laughs> Michael Todd says the reason he has to do weights is because of his injuries. It's forced him to have to lift. Right? Plus, he likes to look good. He looks he likes to look big. Yeah. <laughs> pretty, pretty boy. He, he's got a mental thing where he has to be big to perform well. Do you, as you've injured, have you had to go more to weights? I haven't. I haven't. I've, I've just tried to adapt, and that's been, I, you know. I, I've been trying to do the rehab stuff with the shoulder. I do like light bands and stuff to try to get the blood flow going. But even at that, for me right now, it just aggravates it more than, than helps it. But I, I lean more on the side of after a hard arm wrestling workout, go home and relax and, you know, rest, complete rest. Don't, don't, try to, don't try to take away from that stimulation of... You know the, the workout by doing another you know light workout. How many days would you rest after that table? Norm normally, in the in most of my career, it was always a week. We'd always arm wrestle just once a week. But early, early, I would pull almost on a daily basis. But I was super young and super new, so. Uh, do you do cardio? Don't do any cardio. I, I should. Have, huh? I should. And I, I'm just, I'm, even my best shape of my life in high school uh, track team. I couldn't. I couldn't run a six-minute mile to save my life. I just. I was just not built for, for endurance stuff. Throughout your life, have you always had a standard American diet? Or yeah, shitty diet. <laughs> exactly. That's what I was Very shitty diet. And and the first probably what probably hurt me the most is probably alcohol. I mean, I I didn't I didn't drink a beer, nothing till I was probably in my mid thirties, early you know early forties. And now it's a regular thing for me, right? Because it's it helps you know numb the pain. <laughs> Was there a noticeable difference because they're from another country that they do different things that made you maybe change a little bit? No, I mean, if I really go back to the first time yeah, that I went like to the Moscow, the Gold Bear in 1990, I um, can't remember, the first few times I went to Europe and yeah. Russia. Hey, did you go they did. Did you go 99? I went in 90, 94, 98. In 90, they didn't know how to arm wrestle. I mean, it was almost, you That's know, what I was wondering. It, was, yeah. it was funny. I mean, we could toy with them all. I mean, but it didn't take long. I mean, four, right. five, six did, years, did, 10 years that, later. You know, it's like hindsight. I don't see too much old stuff until more 2000s, mm -hmm. right? Well, yeah, right, yeah, right, right. right. It really rampant. Yeah, and maybe the late 90s. They, they, were, they had a strong group in the late 90s. When I went back in 94, it was still fairly easy. They had one or two good guys. 98 was way tougher. Uh, yeah. Now it's Steadily just gone crazy, crazy, crazy. Totally. Crazy. Very cool. What's the most tournaments you ever hit in a year? I would guess maybe 25, maybe 30. There was a time where I was going every, sometimes every, uh, every weeks, once, twice a month. So back in the early, early days when there was always a small tournament somewhere. Grandson. No, two girls. If you had a son, do you think he, he would have like really good genetics for wrestling? Um, my wife's pretty tiny, so I I would have had to. Yeah, I don't know. Both my girls are just a little above five one, five two, so they're they're small, and uh, and they married small guys. So even my grandson, he, as much as I would love to think maybe I, in five years I'd start training him for arm wrestling, it's probably not going to happen. She know she at the beginning she would go with me a lot, especially you know we travel up drive up to Canada. Well, she's all kinds of stories of, of me getting stranded, running out of gas up in the middle of Canada when the, because there's no gas stations, traveling it. Two in the morning and like what the crap? Thirty below zero and off rules versus. Uh, I never pay attention to the rules. I don't. I don't. You know, <laughs> until someone says that's wrong or you, you're you're fouled out or I don't. Yeah, I, I, I try to figure it out once I get up at the table because I. 
<laughs> I don't. I don't. I never. I never was big into try to analyze uh, the rules or try to find some loophole or advantage. What about the running foul? I, I don't remember that when I was in, and now it's like a big thing. Yeah, well, because it's great for TV, right? You want to you want to continue to watch the match. You don't want to be like WAF where every second they're you know the camera. Oh, stop the match! The camera detected a uh, you know minuscule foul. That, that's that's horrible for TV. Yeah. How come the Powell and Igor haven't adopted that? They're 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 more about just pure sport than they are for a spectator. Um, it's, it's horrible for us, uh, you know, the audience to be having matches stop like that. And they, Igor will stop matches two seconds into the match because the camera saw a tiny something that you would think you would think people would eventually be keen to that and, and stop doing that, but it's still human nature to. As a fan, I think. For me, WAL is the, is, the, is the proper format. I mean, I find myself actually enjoying watching the super matches like the, like they're, they're presenting versus an open tournament like WAF does. It's it's better promotion, in my opinion, to have super matches, right? I mean, it's like boxing. Or you, as a promoter, you can say, hey, we got Michael Todd, and we got, you know. I mean, it gets people more excited and involved and be able to talk about it and analyze it. And you got an open event, you don't know who the hell's going to show up, right? So it's really, as a promoter, it's really difficult. So I would, you know, I would probably do super matches, a bunch of super matches. I think, I think WAL is doing a fantastic job. I don't think they can do it any better. I well, just the tournament style. Yeah, never the super match stuff. Yeah, I think I think my match with Devin was uh, De well, actually it was Barbosa for the final. It was 2016, I think, 15 or 16. 15 is when you had that famous match with Devin, where he was trying to slip and he got his hand. Yeah. So that was the last time I pulled in the so WAL. That, that started as a tournament, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was wondering about the next version, the super matches. You yeah, that that was two years later, I think, in 2017 or 18. Yeah, I decided it. after my match with Devin, I was like. <laughs> Are you retired officially? Ah, retired? I've been, retired? Yeah, I've been officially retired. From, where have you been? No, I've been you officially retired. No, there's no, no way getting me out of retirement. No, no, just for fun. Where you for back? fun? How, how, from really. what kind of fun? This is fun, right? This is what I've done. This type of stuff. Yeah. Can we keep you in? Yeah, no, I, I'll, do, I'll do stuff like this, and I have done stuff like this. And I've I've been talked in actually armacy against other armisters at the Moldova event what, a couple years ago. That's that's me in retirement showing up to that. Someone said your heart wasn't in it. Is that true? Oh, well, my heart, my body, everything wasn't in it. <laughs> no, I had fun. No, I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, and it, you know, in my mind, I mean, it was. I did. I did a lot better than I thought I was going to do. Actually, I got there and I was like, "Shit, I took third. How uh, how low were you getting out to grip eleven to put him in a hook? Really low, like <laughs> yeah. like Cleve Dean low, like 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 that. Like it would be a ridiculous <laughs> thing. And, and he might be way too strong to be able to do anything with. But if I was Dave Chapey, that's what I would be be practicing a lot. I'd be practicing a lot of of, of sweeping and going across and getting a hook by grabbing really low on on people. I know he probably doesn't have. The correct people to train with to simulate something like Levon. He's so strong in some places, but like he's super strong, and he's super strong, and his hand is. But super when you're strong. like when you were hooked to hook with him, oh, he was at a big disadvantage. So he had just pulled Saplinka. I mean, if that was fresh, he would he would have threw me across the table. I think, yeah. No matter how strong you are in the upper body, you got to have the be able to translate it to the, your opponent by having the strong hand, which he has. But um, yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't know what Dave does to to develop that side pressure. But he's super strong up, up upper arm, and he can come across, you know, this way to stretch you out. Um, it's, it's the strongest I've ever felt. I mean, I w I wasn't prepared to arm muscle in that as well as I was at. W uh, W A L. I'll, I'll put it. I'll just leave it at that. I mean, and there was a lot of things against me at that London thing, the super match. Um, I think the referee wasn't very skilled, in my opinion. Um, I was on the wrong side of the straps. It was when the straps didn't go through the middle; they were on the on the bottom side. I mean, when I watched that, I think to myself, oh, "Okay, that was that was the you know." 
Does John Zink need a coach? Like, did you need to be coached along the way, or are you the same John with or without? Uh, I had enough experience to know what I was, the different body types and the different strengths that, that people had from my past experience with other arm wrestlers that were similar to them. So, no, I, I had a pretty good, I felt like I had a pretty good understanding of of, of different, the different situations, the different, so the different arm wrestlers. That would have helped. A corner man help, would help me really, uh, and, and best corner man I've ever had was probably Neil Pickup uh, at the Zloty. When I was going up against Dennis, I was like, I, I got no chance. And he, he got me to the side I was like, dude, you got a chance, you know, don't, you don't mess this up, you know, you can, and it, it helped me mentally to be like, okay, well maybe there's no reason why I shouldn't be giving it my all and be positive about this. I mean, so it's nice to have someone propping you up with that, the mental aspect. Has uh, Ryan Bowen progressed and what does he need to take into the next level? I haven't seen him in a year, but he looks like from the videos he's, he's getting stronger and stronger and stronger. I mean, he's he's, he's kind of like Devin. He's got a real good sticking point, and if he's a great, he'd be a great training partner. I would love to see him come out to Arizona. And more after you or after other He said that he hurt his shoulder a few, couple months back, so he's been doing a little bit different training. I know he was on the Todd Hutchins uh, program of hitting the side hard pressure until it broke and then obviously it broke <laughs> so it's a danger of going up you know that hard RBJ. Uh, probably your ROTN probably the last time I pulled he asked when was the last time I pulled Rob Bidgent it was probably the ROTN yeah <laughs> that was a long, last, long, long time ago. What, what, what year was that? What happened? Yeah, he's he's actually I think a little bit longer limb, a bigger, longer hands, fingers. He was he's difficult to deal with for sure. He's very difficult to deal with. Um, yeah, I can't remember exactly what I did at the ROT. We have to pull up the old video, but I think I kind of snatched him in a hook or something. I can't remember what I did. Coming through the brackets, loser side versus. The greatest arm wrestler in the world of all time. Emma and Kelly, be ready. Set! The perfect storm! When you would pull Dennis, there, and you would like, you would try to pin, come back center, you would never your grip, at least not that I could see, you would never really change anything, right? You would just try again. Yeah, I had I had really good control. I had the right side of the strap with Dennis, so that situation worked out really well for me. It could have worked out horribly wrong if I was on the other side and he put me out of position, but a super match, that's what's great about a super match. If you get the good side um, and you're smart, like Devin, and, and get somebody out of position and they're not so keen to what you're doing <laughs> and they wear themselves out, I mean, they're ruined for the next five matches and that's just how it kind of kind of worked out with Dennis. You don't think it would have helped you if you like climbed a little more like Devin? Um, I, I, I felt confident. I, I, I had enough cop and enough pronation in his hand to negate anything that he was going to do and I kind of just sat there and kept it and I wore it out a little bit. Never climb, never grip. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't, I don't grip high unless somebody's doing like Travis is doing, and I want to play that finger boom, 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 boom game. It's not really, it's not really a strength thing. Then it's uh, who can react quickest and get the the hand as high as. So normally you didn't cap. No, never capped. Yeah. Get the control. Control and always let it that in that finger float. It, it's it, it his his grip actually felt comfortable to me. It's like okay, I can still do my pronation, um, and he he doesn't feel like he's going to be able to contain it because his little. His fat fingers aren't quite yeah. around my <laughs> hand well enough, there, right? Uh, under push control was like the, the staple for, for going that. high like that, yeah. Going high. How did you? Because you never hit him first; you always caught. From what I saw. But yeah. Now, well, it's high, it's hard because he's so tall, yeah. and his hand position was better than than I could ever achieve, even if I was stronger. I mean, I'm going to be underneath him. Yeah. Andre, like Andre, for me, I pull. I try to pull like Travis. I would end up. I try to slip, get in the strap. He wasn't a very great strap puller for some reason. His style, the way he liked to drag, didn't wasn't didn't wasn't a, as effective in the strap. So I would either try to hook him or I would try to get high high hand top row because I couldn't match I couldn't match the, his hand height for sure.
I never crunch like Travis does. I just try to keep my knuckles high. Knuckles high and then pronate. But you weren't worried about containment with your fingers as much? No, no. Because they, they normally would turn out, so they would turn out underneath your hand with their move. Or if you were Andre Pushkar, you would have the hand strength to, you know, buckle, buckle it under and then you're done. Yeah, he was, I don't know if he's quite as tall as Devin, but he was probably 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, this one, the WAL or the old oh, school I, yeah, no, I, horseshoe ones? Like um, horseshoe ones, there was a lot of cheating involved in the horseshoe ones. You could prop your arm on the corner and kind of lock like it up and, point, and yeah. a leverage. So, so this is this is a cleaner, more... Keeps you honest. I, I don't like the I don't like the WAL pillow all the way to the back yeah. of the table. That's that's ridiculous. <laughs> uh, but it, it actually works okay for me because I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a drag puller, so I'm I'm not. The more room I have to be able to pull you across the table, the better I'm going to be. Yeah, for sure. Two. Did you ever pull sit down? Yeah, a long, long time ago. What is it, what's the difference? You just don't have the body movement. I mean, it's well, and, and is that something that you could train with to feel better to, to rely on? Um, it, it was more like uh, I would I would compare it to like wrist wrestling. So. Um, sit down. You just you weren't able to turn away from your body as well, um, just like wrist wrestling. So it required a lot more uh, front arm, bicep, hand control of, of, of this fight than the actual side pressure. Sharon Ramez. Yeah. I heard him say that he had trouble controlling his hand back in the day. Yeah, he was like Travis. He was he was a high handed top roller, and those are the guys that typically in my high high top rollers were always difficult for me. Um, I don't know. He was supposed to have a match with uh, Ryan Bowen, right? I don't know if that ever. Well, he was supposed to make kind of. Well, oh, he did or Ryan did? Yeah, nobody's traveling though right now. Yeah. Good. 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 Don't be so lazy with that hand. Make sure it stays there. There. Yeah, good. That, that pulls yeah, good. Oh. <laughs> See, now I'm done. I'm toast. <laughs> <laughs> Got good technique. You're, you're shooting for the pad. Yeah. You've got good good containment. Now do the roll. Okay. Yeah. That's better. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh huh. Damn. You, you hear my shoulder cracking? Click, 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 click. So the left one does it too. I was like, ah. You're welcome. Just want to get a picture of me. So, cup. 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 That's your cup, okay. So I'm going to match your cup. And then once I got the cup match, then I'm going with the thumb into your fingers. Okay. So nice. it's... Go right there. Yeah, it's cup and then pronation with the thumb into my fingers. Yep, there it is. You can you can drop your body further. That's it. Yep. That's you got good mechanics. You got really good mechanics. <laughs> this one, this is a good. This your good arm. Yeah. <laughs> so you're giving you're giving me all that though because you're doing all the. If you do this a little bit, okay, then it, it's going to force me to change my. I'm not going to be off. I, now I'm sick. How am I going to be offensive like I was yeah, just a bit <laughs> a bit ago? Now I'm in a, a different spot. Now you're forcing me to try to hang on to you. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, there you go. something so simple. Yeah. Oh man, everybody's strong now. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you're working the king's move on me. <laughs> oh. Thank you for letting me win. <laughs> <laughs>
I don't let anybody win. It just happens sometimes. Oh, yeah, I know. You're way, way too fresh for me. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're a strong left even. Oh, yeah, you got good technique. You don't need any instruction. Ah, oh, man. Do you ever train um, just like in the hook, just constant pressure or? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's like 50%? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna do that with Vermin. We go to, we go to death like. Uh, Neither one of us try to pin each other. Just go until we yeah, go it's numb. Yeah, in the face. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just go numb, yeah. No, but it just, it just, it just tells me that the most of the fatigue for arm wrestling is. Well, that's that's fixable. E yeah, even well, it's, it's just it needs to be trainable. Yeah. So you're right. I mean, it, yeah. And because of my mindset of that, I need to arm wrestle to, to train that. <laughs> I probably should switch to something that would isolate that, that wouldn't wouldn't aggravate that, and that I could get this back into a yeah. good condition again. So where do the shoulder injuries come in? Yeah. And, uh, what movement injures the shoulder? Just just that 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 side is. Okay. That like arm break. Yeah, it it just kind of binds things up to me up in here. Because even even bone like I guess are the same. Yeah. So I'm in, when I'm in good condition, uh -huh. I, it's never been about facing my arm and using the front of my arm or bicep. It's always been about down pressure. Down pressure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. down pressure. Right here. Yeah, yeah. and then that's where that comes in. And you get your body all straight here. Yeah. Okay. And I don't know why that aggravates that little muscle up. Right through there. Well, that makes sense. That's, that's all yeah. in tight right there. feels like it's on the borderline of snapping I, and I, have, I actually think about it like man that thing's gonna just snap one of these days <laughs> oh, yeah no I feel you I'm gone I'm gone I'm really seriously gone what uh I was just wondering how so you're trying to get right now you're trying to work your in your fingers cup and then yeah, we're working in your fingers with my pronation. Right. But first you're trying to stop. Stop, stop your pronation, right. right. Yeah, mine, if you really, when people get me, my worst thing is when people really like come down with it. They like, come and they get me turn, they turn over my pronation and you, so fast. And do you still try to fight with the pronation though? Even when you're in that position? Well, I usually don't last that long. You know, I mean like right off the you can't pro I get, You I can't flash downward. You gotcha. know, like this. And once I get to here, it's like... So what do you find yourself doing when you're there? Or how are you how are you fighting them off? Are you fighting them off with a hook, and dragging back up, or are you still committing to going this direction? No, no you're, not, you're still not going this direction. No, no. maybe you should. Like, yeah. yeah, like that. Yeah, that right. would probably. I could probably fight right, better. even if it's this deep, you should be still constantly right following it and and right. You want you want to take an ass beating for ten thousand dollars? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll take an ass beating for ten thousand dollars. <laughs> put it like that, right? You're right. Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. That's how he got me to mold over. I'm like, <laughs> I ain't going there. I'll get my. Ass. You want? Oh, you've taken an ass beating, ass whooping on purpose for less, less money than that. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. <laughs>